the sarcophagus, the legendary place, the center of the zone. According to the rumors, this is where you will find the monolith, or wish granter. But in reality, the concrete tomb of Reactor 4 hides another secret. What is the monolith, and what are the mysteries surrounding this place? Hello stalkers and welcome to the Anomalous Dugout. In this video we will answer these questions by taking a look at the sarcophagus and the monolith control center. Obviously there will be major spoilers. And I would also like to say that this video is part of a series, so I suggest you go watch the previous episodes if you haven't already. Link to the playlist in the description. And now let's take a look at the interior of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, starting with the real history of the location. As you probably know already, the fourth reactor of the CNPP is the one that exploded during the first disaster, on the 26th of April 1986. Due to a number of reasons that I'm not an expert enough to be able to explain properly, the protective shield of the reactor was blasted in a huge explosion, opening the heart of the nuclear reaction to the outside world. The area around the station was littered with heavily contaminated debris, while a dangerous radioactive cloud was released into the air, quickly spreading to large territories over Eastern Europe. In the months following the catastrophe, Workers known as liquidators were employed to clear out the mess left after the explosion and to build an enormous concrete structure above the open reactor in order to stop the radiations from leaking. This contraption was called the sarcophagus. So, let's go inside and see what interesting features we can find in there. One of the first things you will notice is a strong voice in your head, calling for you. Твое желание скоро исполнится. Иди ко мне. This is the voice of the legendary monolith, said to be located in the ruins of Reactor 4. What exactly is the monolith? Well, we will answer this question a bit later in the video. For now, all you need to know is that the area is swarming with elite soldiers of the Monolith faction, a cult of fanatics that swore to protect the Monolith with their lives. Thankfully, we can deal with them quite easily while exploring the sarcophagus. The location is mainly made out of dark corridors and hallways, scarcely lit by underpowered sources of light, and most of all, it is heavily contaminated. The constant cracking of the Geiger counter, combined with the voice of the monolith, and the general ambience are plenty enough to send chills down your spine. Also, the monolithian defenders seem to use the dark corners to hide, and they have placed the furniture in convenient spots to take cover. One strange thing I noticed was a large hole made in one of the walls to connect separate rooms. We do not know who made this hole, it could have been the monolith troops themselves, or someone else. In any case, it was probably made because most of the doors in here are locked. In fact, there are many locked doors and collapsed hallways in the area much like in every underground location in the zone. One of the most iconic landmarks is the suppression pool. These are extremely radioactive, because this is one of the locations where some of the most contaminated stuff was stored after the 1986 disaster. However, if you go into the lower suppression pool, you will find a chest with very valuable equipment including an exoskeleton, along with a crate containing some of the rarest artifacts in the zone. 
This stash was most likely made by members of the monolith faction, as they appear to not really care about the surrounding radiation. In fact, there are other small items stored in various boxes around the location, as well as another exoskeleton found laying around. Another detail that I noticed was a couple of ventilation fans. This one has the base structure, but is strangely missing the fan itself. However, the second does have the fan, and we can see that it is still working. This is not the first time that we have seen this. In fact, many of the systems in the underground labs, such as lights, seem to keep working. It makes much more sense here, since the area is inhabited by the monolith faction, but we still do not know where the energy needed to power such devices comes from. Maybe we'll find out another time. Moving on, let's go upstairs into the corridors around Reactor 4. Here we are very close to the epicenter of the disaster, so the radiation levels are even higher. This is the area where you can access the core of the reactor itself. As you can see, the nuclear fuel is still burning here. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be an anomaly, or if the nuclear reaction in the real-life reactor does look like this. But either way, the fire is not dangerous in the game. We can also find the remains of the reactor's famous features, such as graphite blocks, the fuel rods, and the biological shield that was displaced during the original explosion. Needless to say, standing here without radiation protection will get you killed in a matter of minutes. As we climb out of the core and into the giant room under the sarcophagus, we are greeted by the legendary monolith. But before we take a look at the crystal, there are a few interesting things to point out. First, the roof of the building has already started to fall apart. Obviously, this never happened in real life, and in fact, a brand new sarcophagus was built above the old one to ensure the containment of the site for a few more decades. However, in the world of Stalker, this was never possible, because nobody could get to the center of the zone. So, it is likely that the earthquakes triggered by emissions, as well as several attacks from the military, were responsible for the degradation of the structure. The fact that the sarcophagus is partially broken is actually a big deal, since radiation can now freely escape into the surrounding areas. In fact, when we get on top of the roof later in the game, we can experience the tremendous levels of contamination coming out from the holes. Secondly, there is a very conveniently placed teleporter right in front of the monolith. It is quite weird to see a teleporter in such a location, and the fact that it helps you get to the monolith is highly suspicious. And thirdly, I was able to find several fireplaces in this area, around the monolith. I am not sure who made these fires and why. Perhaps they were part of rituals performed by the monolith faction, who knows? Regardless, they give quite a strange and eerie feeling to the place. You know that someone was here before you, and lit up those fires, but what happened to them remains a mystery. And now let's finally take a look at the monolith itself. It resembles a giant crystal, with very bright light in the middle area. Interestingly, looking at the monolith from above will reveal that it is in fact a square. Anyway, now is the time to answer the question, what is the monolith exactly? In order to fully understand the explanation, 
it is necessary to look back at some of the history from the Stalker games. After the Forbidden Exclusion Zone was set up, preventing people from approaching the power plant, groups of scientists decided to use this location to conduct their secret research. Thus, several laboratories codenamed X-Labs were built in the zone, some of them on the site of the power plant. Without entering into too much detail, it was some of these scientists who, after connecting their minds to create a common consciousness, accidentally triggered the second disaster in 2006, resulting in the birth of the Anomalous Zone. If you want to learn more about these events, I suggest you watch my video about the zone. Anyway, the sea consciousness needed to hide its activities from intruders. First the military, and then the stalkers. Because more and more people were trying to get to the center of the zone, the sea consciousness set up a network of obstacles to stop them. Such devices include the infamous Brain Scorcher that we talked about in the last episode, but also the Monolith. The Monolith is both the faction and the rock that we are looking at right now. While the soldiers of the Monolith group are brainwashed fanatics who defend the center of the zone with their lies, the monolith crystal is the subject of many rumors circulating among stalkers. According to some, it is an object of alien origin. Others simply believe it to be a wish granter. I want to be rich. But in reality, they are all wrong, as the monolith is simply an illusion. It is a device created by the sea consciousness as part of their defense system. The goal of the monolith is to lure out stalkers who think that they will make a wish, preventing them from discovering the truth behind the creation of the zone. The exact effects of the monolith on its victims are unknown. It is possible that it recruits stalkers into the monolith faction, or maybe it simply kills them. If we consider that the bad endings of the game are an accurate depiction of the monolith's power, then it seems to realize your wish, but in a twisted and unexpected way that usually leads to a brutal death. However, I do not believe that such endings are really canon and in my opinion it is more likely that the device is just another type of psi-emitter. Yes, a very advanced one, but a psi-emitter nonetheless. In any case, one of the secrets that the monolith was supposed to protect was a mysterious door located not far from the core of Reactor 4. This is the very door that Strelok and his friends discovered during their first trip to the center of the zone, and at the time they could not open it. Many months later, during the summer of 2012, Strelok would return and raid the power plant once again, now equipped with a special decoder built to unlock the door. Somehow the elite troops of the monolith faction were not able to stop him, and Strelok successfully opened the door, leading to a secret laboratory known as the Monolith Control Center. Unfortunately, there is not much to say about this area. It's mostly composed of long corridors filled with monolith warriors and some derelict machinery. It is possible to find equipment stashed by the monolith in the lab, most notably an exoskeleton and a scat armor. The interesting part comes at the end, in the control room. This is where the illusion of the monolith crystal was created and maintained. As you can see, some sort of hologram of the crystal is projected in the center of six strange looking devices. These appear to be the sources of power for the monolith. 
because when Strelok started to destroy them, the emergency systems were triggered. After crushing two generators, a pyrogeist spawns and a voice announces. Attention, power unit damaged, installation power level falling. After cutting two more generators, another pyrogeist will spawn, and the announcer says, Attention, installation power depleted to critical level. After destroying one more, a third pyrogeist appears, and finally, if you break the last generator, the hologram will die, and the voice will declare, not enough power to maintain operative status. Right after that, see consciousness itself will intervene. Hello, Strelok. I see you have many questions for me. Well, if you've played the Shadow of Chernobyl the right way, you know what happens next. So we're not going to focus on that. Instead, I would like to come back to something important that I haven't talked about yet. Inside the sarcophagus, it is possible to find a lot of special crates marked with radioactive and chemical danger warning signs. We've seen such crates before, as they can be found in other places in the zone, most notably in Laboratory X-18. In previous episodes about the secret underground areas, we have speculated that these crates contain chemicals that were used in the experiments carried out in the X-Labs, and that such substances are responsible for the creation of some of the mutants. If this theory is correct, then it means that the presence of a lot of these crates in the sarcophagus cannot be a coincidence. I believe that the Monolith Control Center is not the only secret lab hidden near the sarcophagus, or at least in the area of the power plant. Indeed, the fact that the sea consciousness uses pyrogeists as a protective measure clearly means that these mutants were created in the vicinity, possibly using the chemicals. Moreover, there must be some labs that are still working to provide equipment to the monolith faction, such as the Gauss rifle. Since this weapon uses fragments of flash artifacts for ammunition, it is probably manufactured in the zone, and the fact that many of these rifles are used by monolithians inside the sarcophagus could be a hint that the weapon is indeed being produced nearby. Besides, we know that the room where we find the bodies of the scientists connected to sea consciousness is located close to the CNPP as well, so I would not be surprised if it was part of its own laboratory. This is what at least was planned in the now cut versions of the game. But I digress. This is just my theory, and perhaps I'm completely wrong. I certainly hope we will find out in Stalker 2. Anyway, that was basically everything interesting that I was able to find about the sarcophagus and the monolith control center. Make sure to tell me in the comments about your thoughts and if I missed anything. As for now, thank you for watching, stalkers, and goodbye.